What's up world? It's your girl Ina Barnes, aka Busy E. And this is my co-host, who's also my son. Jonah Barnes Moore, aka Busy J. And we are coming to you again with another installation of It's Just Business. If you've been following us, you know that what we're doing is we are going down CNBC's top 50 disruptors. Mm -hmm. They have a list of disruptors. And we are going through and putting them against our counter innovation theory to see if, in fact, they are disruptors. And we are talking about number 36 today? 36. And 36. it's called Disruptor or Not. You always forget. It's called, it's called Disruptor or not. or not. That's the segment we're doing. Our segment is Disruptor or Not. Disruptor. And we are on number 36, and that is Air Table. Air Table. Yeah. Next Generation Workplace Collaboration. Now, this one is a little interesting, so we'll take it slow. I actually tried to use their product um, to get a better understanding of exactly what they do because they have a free subscription model and all that stuff. So I dove in a little deeper. But so Airtable, they were launched in 2012 and they're headquartered in San Francisco. West Side. They're currently valued at $1.1 billion. B, my favorite B word. Their founders are Howie Liu, the CEO, Andrew Ofstad, and Emmett Nicholas. And they are in the database management industry, and the key technologies that they use are cloud computing. Now, so what are they? So I'm going to read you the description that's actually on the CNBC website, and then I'll give you my overview and put it in layman's terms. So, this San Francisco-based cloud company lets non-techies build custom apps for their businesses affordably and in a matter of days. Airtable was co-founded by Harry Liu, who sold his other startup enterprise software company, eTax, to Salesforce in 2011. Liu believes that software is the most profound medium for expression and economic value creation, but up until Airtable, it wasn't really accessible to most people. That's why he set out to make the company's platforms more user-friendly to build complex software applications. Basically, it lets users create spreadsheets like Google Sheets and Microsoft Excel, but the sales can accommodate photos, lists, um, photos and lists, and not just numbers. So, I got to actually experience this product um, because when I just read the description, I was kind of like, "What is it? What? How? Like? Is, yeah, what do they do? What do they what, do? What, right? What's, what's so different about? Why are, it, right? are they the Microsoft? You know? Right? Are they trying to take down Microsoft? What are they? What are they doing? Yeah. So, um. I will say this, it is a lot like spreadsheets, right? So think literally of your average Excel spreadsheet, but the capabilities are, you know, a little easier to use, right? So you don't have to know all the codes or everything, you know, all the functions, because when you're in Excel building your stuff, you don't necessarily have to have a function. You can literally, literally just click a few buttons and set up your Excel sheet or a spreadsheet, I should say, in the way that you want it and have it easily customizable you can filter very easily you can add pictures which is different that you can't really add in um add in excel and it's really like it gives you the freedom to really kind of create a spreadsheet in the exact way that you want it now with that said um a critique that i had was that it's a little too open and too creative meaning that it's easily to get confused with what functions can do what how can it like, you know, the, it's, it's almost like, what do they call it? They call it when you're overwhelmed with the decision making at a store, right? So say you want to buy cereal, but mm -hmm. there's like a thousand cereals on mm -hmm. the wall and you're like, you have that overload. Like, okay, mm -hmm. I don't, that's the kind of feeling I get with all the tools that they have on it. Like, oh, you can do this, you can do that. But what is cool, which I liked, is that they have templates set up. So if you are confused on that front, you can literally go look at a couple templates and then they have like a public sharing kind of collaborative network where people create templates and put them up for everybody to see. Okay, so correct me if I'm wrong, Jonas. So for mm. example, if I put together a, a spreadsheet or whatever, mm. and this software empowers me to type in JVM Consultants, and then what will happen is that it will auto-populate Everything about JVM consultants, no. content, that's not what it does. No, no. Okay. No. So you still have to input your data no matter what. You can I have to put you have my, to put your data in. It's all not, of my data. It's not a search so engine. You have to put everything in. in okay. Right. Um, it's just 
about how you can arrange that data and how you can filter that data, right? So um, when you get deep into Excel, um, it's very hard to filter and pull data from spreadsheets. Yeah. With this, you can you can set filters like specifically by like oh color or by keywords or by you know pictures or whatever, right? And then you can literally customize your whole spreadsheet to accommodate the data that you have. So it's not like a search engine. It's not gonna auto populate anything. You just have more control. It's like a super featured, um, fe featured Excel. You know, with new bells and whistles and all that stuff. And I would go so far as to say this is the understanding that we have of, as people who have taken a deep dive into this company and tried to extrapolate what do they do, mm -hmm. how does that benefit me, first of all, and then the world, and then are they disrupted? Right. So it's kind of like, okay, so we're taking it from our seat. Because for whatever reason, this has shown up on this list and I don't get it mm -hmm. and I need to get it. I want to get it. So, mm -hmm. so what is your understanding of why they made this list? Because um, of the cloud computing technologies, right? So it's not, you don't have to, for instance, with Excel and Microsoft, you don't have to buy that whole package, right? Okay. You don't have to buy all that. You can just have like a free, it's based on how much data you use mm -hmm. with those spreadsheets and it's online and you can create many different types of, they call them, the, the, they, the reason why it makes it confusing is because they call them like customize your applications. You can build all these applications. You can, but they're not what you think. The word application is not a good word. Um, it's more like templates, you know, it's more like you can kind of build a CRM in there Right? Something like that. But so really it's it's just not um I can't I can't right. I can't figure out why they put them on the list. Okay, so let's 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 let's, let's go, go, let's go to the C I T. Let's yeah. go up to the counter innovation. Yeah, I can't theory. come up with anything. Okay, so point. when we hold them up against the counter innovation theory, where are they with that? So Okay. So Tell them about the criterion. Are you, for the first time watchers who are here for the very first time, we have our own framework for disruption called the counter innovation theory. And with this theory, we identify the characteristics of the most disruptive companies such as Facebook, Amazon, Apple, Netflix, Google, Uber, Lyft, uh, Fangool, if you will. And so we literally research them, identify some key characteristics and some criteria that actually made them disruptive. And we impl implemented that through our theory and so the criteria that we came up with is that all disruptive companies do at least one of these three things the first is challenge the status quo challenge the status quo the second is develop the disruptive technology this develop develop disruptive technology the third is address high priority unrecognized pain points address high priority unrecognized pain points yes okay those three things and if you look at any disruptor any successful disruptor this is, they do one of these three things. Now. So where's Airtable? Airtable. So I know why they were on this list. They leveraged cloud computing. So cloud computing is a new type of technology. And this list, as we've seen, you know, going through, they like companies that have a lot of funding that have leveraged some kind of technology. But for us, challenging the status quo. Um, this one, when it comes to their product specifically, do they challenge the status quo? No. Um, not really, you know, um, because especially since Google Sheets are out there, right, and there's Google Drive and there's like a whole fr like freemium kind of network that's already What's that in place. What's that word you just said? Freemium. Oh, what is freemium? Freemium. Oh, um, so typically, you know, it's a certain type of business model, right? So to gain subscribers, you have a freemium model. Like, so for example, LinkedIn is a freemium model. Facebook's a freemium model, right? Until you pay for that extra. Freemium. Yeah. Oh, that's a good word. So, I like that word. Yeah. I'm and so until that you in my pay lexicon. for that extra feature, right? You sure. know, like it could be Facebook ads or LinkedIn um, sales navigator or all those different stuff. It's free. So the freemium, they get you in, they get you using their product. But yeah. if you want that extra capability, okay. yeah, freemium. And so nice. Google um, has done that, right? So they have you can you have Google Drive, you have your Google Sheets all on the cloud computing, right? So that that's nothing new. Um, the features that they add, 
they're not really they they don't really provide that much of a um, new capability and new advantage. So it's really not dis it's not challenging the status quo, right? Okay. I would still prefer to use Excel over this because I understand the functions, the technologies, and I can. Yeah, Microsoft was first in, and they did they've a been good doing job. It for we're a very bought, long time. we're bought in. Yeah, and and, and you're, they're not doing anything so disruptive to challenge the status quo that's like, oh, I might actually have to take a look at that, right? It's like they're kind of just doing things what we call a continuous innovations, and that's known throughout all if you are a product manager or anything like that continuous innovations are just yeah. small Im um, improvements on existing products right so this is what like that's how I see them as a whole they just made some really small incremental um, and yet important yeah they're important yeah innovations for innovations yeah. onto um, an Excel spreadsheet or a spreadsheet. Which every company should be looking to do. Yeah, and, and most If you're not going to change the world, if you're not going to invent the iPhone, or you're not going to be Amazon, this is a good example of an yeah. incremental innovation that you can do. Right. But does it stand up to the CAT? So the yeah. number one, no. Challenge the status quo, no. No. What's the second one? Um, the second one is develop the disruptive technology. Develop the disruptive technology. Yeah, and so they okay. did it. They didn't develop cloud computing, right? They did continuous innovations. Um, they, yeah, that's a no for me. They didn't. No for me. They didn't create anything that provides new capabilities that did not exist before, right? So when you think of developing disruptive technology, you think you know the iPhone, semiconductors, Wi-Fi, five G, artificial intelligence, all those kind of things that actually provide you with new capabilities. Yeah, Airtable didn't do that. They did continuous improvements on a product that yeah. already existed, right? Okay. So what's the third? No one? on the disruptive. No and on the, the third disruptive. one is address high priority unrecognized pain points, and um, I think this is the one that they focused on was yeah. the high priority pain points. That's but okay. Good. They okay. weren't. They weren't uh, um, unrecognized. I feel like with the, their strategy and what they were tr trying to focus on was what are the pain points for people who have a hard time using Excel. And so they're like, how can we make it simple and how can we make it customizable? So they focused on the high priority pain points, but they didn't address any unrecognized high priority pain points because everybody knows Excel is a little bit different. So they made it a, they made a, a, a slight innovation, mm -hmm. which is important. Right. But yeah. it's not disruptive. It, yeah, because it wasn't addressed. It wasn't like they solved something that I didn't know um, was a problem for me. You know, I didn't realize I had this problem and you, your product made that evident. Yeah. That's not what they did. But they did hone in on the highest priority pain points of saying it's difficult to use Excel spreadsheets. Because I know when I was in my job as a financial analyst, the learning curve for Excel and all the different functions is a very steep curve. You know, it's very hard to learn. So this does solve a problem. But, the, but for our criteria, when it comes to addressing high priority unrecognized pain points, it doesn't do that. But it does address high priority pain so points. So on our criteria, there are no, no, no. On our three, mm -hmm. the, our three criteria, there are no, no, no. Yeah. Now, is Airtable valuable? Absolutely. 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 Yes. And I would go so far as to say what you would say is that if you disagree with us, we want to hear from you. Absolutely. We want to know. We want to know. You we want to hear from you to say, well, wait a minute, Airtable does this, yes. and this is what you are missing, JBM consultants. Mm -hmm. You're missing this piece of it, and we want to have the dialogue. But for now, right now, we're on the page of it doesn't stand up to the, C the um, counter innovation theory, the CIT. Right. So we say, are they a disruptor? No, no. They are they're not a disruptor. But they do have a lot of value. They're valued they, at one point. But they point add value. Million. Yeah, and they do solve problems. So yeah. that that's how you know it's a, a good business overall. And, overall. And so the thing about being disruptive is that you have to think these are the disruptive the disruptors that we used for our theory are the ones that changed the world. So when we're talking about addressing um, these criteria, these criteria are for are like a rare air. Like this is a higher standard. Rare that, air. Yeah. Very nice. Thank you. Um, this is a higher standard that we're holding these businesses to, right? We're not just saying like, you know, are they a business? Do they have a website? Are, no, we're, are they disruptive? Are they on the verge of changing the world? Are they doing something that's different, adding new ca mm -hmm. capacities, you know, challenging underlying assumptions, addressing problems we didn't realize were there? The, those are the companies that we are 
um, referencing when we were talking about RCIT, and that's where we extracted this criteria from. So this is real fine stuff that we're talking about. But as a company in general, if you're in, they've been in business seven years, and that's something to be celebrated. So, well, I says uh, so six years. So six, oh, mine 2013. says twenty twelve one here. Oh, mine says twenty thirteen. Aller says twenty thirteen. I trust. I trust CNBC. Six six and a half. Yeah, I trust CNBC. Aller. Okay. You know. Seven. Years. But yeah. Regardless, that's a good stint, and they're making, and they're, they're, they had $170 million in funding. Um, and I would bet you, Jonah, that they are already looking at some of the kinds of things that were surfacing. Oh, absolutely. So they're looking at ways to mm -hmm. do what they do better yes. to address the consumer need, because I would imagine that their clients or their customers have come to them with, well, yeah, this is great, and but, yeah. and mm -hmm. or but, you know, that's er, anyone in business has mm -hmm. come in contact with a client or a customer who has said, yeah, and, yeah. or they said, yeah, but, mm -hmm. so they're in the and but place. They they're there. Yeah. They've been there, so they already know what they need to do. Mm -hmm. So, but for purposes of our discussion, yeah. not a disruptor. Not a disruptor. And we like them as a company. Not yes, a yes, they're a great company. Are they a yeah. disruptor like you know, the Facebook, Amazon, Apple, Netflix, Google's, Uber, and List? No. So we want to thank you guys for tuning in. Make sure you tune in next week where we will be talking about. Who are we talking about next week? Open Jonah? door. That is number thirty-five. Open door. Open. Low is stress that home one sales. Word? Interesting. Open. Is that one word? Two word? Open one door word? is one word. Open, open door, door. low what stress do home do? sales. Well, you have to <laughs> low stress, low home stress sales? home sales. Well, but if you want to learn more, more, you have to watch us next week. Stay tuned, right? So we want to thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you. Make sure you check thank out our you. website, jbmconsultants.org. That's where we have all of the other podcasts. So if this was your very first one. We're on number thirty-six. So there's what fourteen other podcasts you can go watch and see. So we can get you can get in on the discussion of. If they're a disruptor or not, we also have on our website, jbmconsultants.org, merchandise that you can purchase for your support. And always, please remember to like, share, subscribe, get in on the conversation, throw in your two cents. Are they a disruptor or are they not a disruptor? We'd love to hear from you. Um, and yeah, when you get into those comments and when you like and share, you might get some feedback and people saying, oh, well, no, they are because X, they are because Y, and the motion will rise. But one thing we always say here at JBM Consultants and with this segment is that it's not personal. It's, it's just, just business. business. So thank you guys. Take care. We'll see you next see time. See you next time. Thank you.